Hello everybody, uh, this is the talking head up in the upper right corner this time because why not, let's do something different. Uh, today I want to spend just a couple minutes talking about the ideological effects of the early Cold War and what I mean by that is how did the Cold War affect the American political spectrum. Because um, as we've been talking about in previous lectures, there's all kinds of stuff going on with Red Scares and you know Sputnik and uh, Soviet movement in Eastern Europe and American efforts to contain communism in Iran, Guatemala, Cuba. And so there's a lot going on and I just want to talk a little bit about how that's going to affect American politics. This is the universally, not universally maybe, but this is the largely accepted kind of model of human political ideology. Uh, it, you've got a moderate middle, and then you've got two wings, the left wing and the right wing, which are the same left wing and right wing that you hear about in American politics today. But on those wings, on the right wing, you've got conservatism leading to libertarianism, leading to fascism. I'm not going to spend time today explaining what all of those isms are and how they differ and all of that. I just want you to get a general sense of how this is all laid out. On the far right end of the spectrum, you've got fascism. On the left wing, you've got liberalism, socialism, and then at the far end, you've got communism. Now, there are a lot of people that argue about maybe some of these things should be shifted around. Uh, people on the right end of the spectrum don't like being associated with fascism, so they always say that fascism should be on the left end. There's people on the far left end of the spectrum who don't like being associated with communism, so they argue that communism should actually be over on the left or on the far right end of the spectrum. We're not going to get involved in those arguments right now. This is the accepted academic model for political scientists and other people that just study this stuff. So we're going to go with this. Um, now, what happened in the early Cold War, of course, is that during, I mean, this is in the wake of World War II. And in World War II, the Americans had been fighting against the fascists, uh, you know, the Nazis, Hitler, um, Mussolini. And so it shouldn't be too surprising that after World War II, the far right end of the political spectrum is not going to be welcomed in a regular American discourse anymore. And so that right end of the spectrum is largely going to disappear for a while, not for long, but for a while. And so uh, the, you know, the libertarian wing, the fascist, any, any people with fascist ideas, libertarian is not equal fascism, don't get me wrong, but <clears throat> anything on the far right end of the political spectrum is going to get kind of frozen out of mainstream political discourse in the United States. Now, of course, in the wake of World War II, there's a new Cold War in effect, and who's the enemy there? Of course, it's the Soviet Union, and Soviet Union is a communist government, and so it's not shouldn't be too surprising that, of course, the left end of the political spectrum is also going to get discredited and frozen out of a mainstream American political discourse. And so, for a while, in the 1940s, 50s, into the early to mid-1960s, we're going to have a very truncated political spectrum in the United States where there's going to be a very narrow range of political ideologies. There will still be people that will call themselves liberals and people that will call themselves conservatives, and there will still be some bickering over domestic ideas like you know, Truman's um, fair deal plan, that kind of thing. Um, but when it comes to big problems like prosecuting a Cold War, containment, that type of thing, they're all going to march in lockstep with each other. There's going to be a lot of bipartisan uh, deal making going on here. There's going to be a lot of stuff gets done, things like the construction of interstate highways, which normally might have been caught up in political bargaining and all of that. But when you've got the, the nutball ideas on the far left and the nutball ideas on the far right no longer as part of the conversation, it's pretty easy to find a middle ground. And so a lot of stuff got done. Uh, the other thing, of course, that's at play here is that this is in the middle of a Cold War and everybody is terrified of nuclear destruction. By the, you know, by the late 40s, early 50s, into the 60s, the uh, Soviets have an atomic bomb, the Americans have developed a hydrogen bomb, the Soviets are about to light off a hydrogen bomb. Everybody's terrified of nuclear destruction, so that gives everybody also a motivation to get along and cooperate with each other because there's a massive external threat out there. So... What happens is we've got this golden age of American politics where the 
Uh, the right end of the spectrum is, is being ignored. The left end of the spectrum is being ignored. You've got this middle ground left behind. The middle ground is motivated to get stuff done because there's a fear of nuclear annihilation. And so we have this era in which everybody got along. It was a bipartisan era. There wasn't much political turmoil. Political turmoil could be exploited by the enemy as dis, as you know dis, disorganization in the U.S. And so there was a very concerted effort among American politicians not to exhibit any kind of divisiveness. Everybody got along. Which means that today, looking back, a lot of Americans see this as kind of the good old days. Uh, when people, there wasn't a whole lot of political bickering, uh, people got stuff done, uh, regardless of where they were on the political spectrum, they got along with each other. Uh, and that's true, it did happen. However, it happened because it was in a very specific historical context. Uh, fear of nuclear annihilation, World War II discrediting the fascists, the Cold War discrediting the communists, and so we have this very, very narrow political range in the U.S. It's not going to last. Uh, we'll talk in the next couple of weeks about how that's going to start to all fall apart. Um, and obviously, come looking back from today's perspective, obviously it didn't last. Uh, but that's where we are. That's what people talk about when they go back to the Golden Age. Other thing to keep in mind is that I'm only talking about this golden age from a political perspective. This was not a golden age from a racial perspective, from a gender perspective, or from a lot of other perspectives. So I'm just focusing on politics here. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care, and I will talk to you again soon.